Hi guys, thanks for visiting my channel. I hope you're having a nice day. Well, last time we made delicious roasted cornstalk and I've had several people ask me how to use it. Well, you can do the obvious. You can use it for soups and stews. You can also use it to make risotto. Um, you can use it to cook rice in instead of using water. So any place you would use stock and you want that nice corn flavor in the background, you could use it. I was thinking it would even be beautiful in the enchilada sauce we made. Um, I used um, chicken stock for that, um, but I'm, I'm thinking that the roasted corn chowder would be absolutely delicious as well. So today, I'm gonna show you a recipe that you can use your roasted corn stock for, and that is gonna be summer corn chowder. I kind of mentioned it in the video when I was making the stock, and I even had a viewer ask me for the recipe. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So we're not only going to use our lovely sunshine in a jar, I still think that is just so pretty. We are also going to use the corn that we cut off the cob to make this delicious summer corn chowder. So let's get started. So I've got my pan preheating here on a medium, at a medium heat. And to that, we're going to add about three tablespoons of butter. And then I'm also going to add four um, slices of thick cut bacon that I've chopped into about quarter inch pieces. So put that in our pan. And then we're also going to add one sweet onion. Um, you want about a cup, cup and a half of chopped onion. I used, it was one medium for me. So we're gonna put that in as well and we're gonna let the um, bacon cook and the onion cook together and let the onion sweat sweat out and um, when it starts to get a little the onion starts to get a little caramelized on the edges then I will bring you back and we'll start adding our other goodies to our delicious summer soup okay guys we're back I just wanted to bring you in close so you can see uh, the bacon is crispy has crisped up and rendered um, and the onions are starting to turn a little bit caramelized on the edges I did want to mention that if you want to keep this vegetarian, you can leave the bacon out. The bacon just adds a nice smoky flavor in the background. So that's entirely up to you if you want it or if you don't. So right now we are going to add three tablespoons of flour. I'm also going to add three cloves of chopped garlic and you can add as much or as little garlic as you prefer. And we're just going to let that cook for I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute to cook the raw flour taste out of the flour and um, cook the, the garlic a little bit. And you want to stir pretty consistently while this is happening. We don't want anything to stick. Smells delicious. It's hard to beat onion, garlic, and bacon, right? <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty good. So now we're going to add one quart of our beautiful stock. And if you don't have the corn stock, you can always use chicken stock or you can use another vegetable stock. Whatever you have on hand, whatever you want. And then we're also going to add a little bit of fresh thyme. Got this out of my herb garden. I'm going to go ahead and just put the whole sprigs in and then I will pull the stems out later on. We're going to go ahead and add that. And then, sorry, <laughs> I'm also going to add one bay leaf. Maybe if I can get the lid off. There we go. I have about a pound of red potatoes here, baby red potatoes. You can use whatever kind of potatoes you want. You can use Yukon Gold, you can use regular russet, whatever you like. I love the red because I love the color. So we're gonna add that. And then we're also going to add our corn. Now, if you did not 
make the um, stock and um, follow along with that, you would need about eight cobs of corn. You would cut the corn off um, and use that corn in this recipe. So I have, I tried to guesstimate because obviously we, <laughs> um, I did 20 ears at once. So I'm guessing, I'm estimating about how much corn I'll need. But you want the amount of about eight ears of corn. So about two cups, I would say, two and a half cups. You can add as much or as little as you like. I'm just gonna go ahead and add all that. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to bring this up to a simmer and we're gonna let it simmer for 20 minutes or so um, until our potatoes are nice and tender. So when we get there, I'll bring you back. And I also wanted to mention we want to simmer with the lid on. We don't really want to have any of our liquid evaporate. We just want to cook our potatoes. So I'm going to cover this and let it simmer on a medium low, low heat, um, just nice and gently until our potatoes are done. Okay guys, we're back. I cooked, um, let my soup simmer with the lid on for about 20 minutes, check my potatoes and they are done. And I tasted the soup and it is amazing. That roasted corn stock just really takes this up a whole other notch. But I do wanna say that if you didn't make the stock, you can still make the soup. So don't let that deter you. Like I said, just use chicken stock or other vegetable stock and then just use about eight ears of corn and go ahead and cut the corn off of the cob and still follow the rest of the instructions. But I highly encourage you to give that roasted corn stock a try. It's absolutely amazing. If you missed the video, you do not have to can it. You can freeze it and, and it will be just as delicious, but it has really added to this soup. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the chowder part of the soup. And my secret ingredient, oh, I just made a mess. <laughs> Uh, my secret to that is canned evaporated milk. Now you have other options here. You can use cream, you can use half and half, you can use milk, you can use whatever you want, but the evaporated milk for me is a game changer for cream soups and gravies and anything that's creamy in nature. It's just really delicious. Even mashed potatoes, it makes amazing mashed potatoes. So what I'm gonna do first is fish out my bay leaf and my thyme stems. They are in here somewhere. Maybe. There's one. There's the other ones. All right. So now what we're going to do is pour in our milk. And then I'm also going to add about two teaspoons of freshly ground black pepper. And then um, my seasoning is really pretty good, but I am gonna add a little bit of seasoned salt. I love seasoned salt. It adds a lot of complex flavor, I think, more so than just plain salt. And we'll add a couple of teaspoons of fat as well. I'm gonna bring that up back up to a simmer. and let that heat through. And then when we come back, we're gonna do our final step and our chowder will be ready. Okay guys, our chowder, chowder is all done. Everything's heated through. I did bring it back up to a simmer, simmer and I let it simmer for about five minutes. So now what we are gonna do, and you can totally skip this step if you want to, I'm gonna use my immersion blender and I'm going to blend a little bit of the soup. I'm not gonna to totally puree it, but I'm just gonna blend part of it. Now you can do this with an immersion blender or you can do, take a scoop out like a cup, a cup and a half of your chowder and put it in your blender, blend it up and then add it back up to this back into your soup. And it just adds more texture, makes it a little thicker, but it's entirely up to you. So let's blend a little bit of it. just gonna help add a little texture. Just just a little bit, just like that. We're gonna give it another stir. Now, I do wanna say that if you 
want a thicker texture, you can always use more flour. I only use three tablespoons, but you can use as much as you like to make it as thick as you like. Also, if you want to start with the three tablespoons of flour and you get to the end and it's not quite as thick as you want, you can always do a cornstarch slurry to thicken it up. Or the other thing that you can do is, and I don't think I've ever shown this on my channel, but another way to thicken soups, especially creamed soups, and you want a little extra silky silkiness to them, if you take equal parts of softened butter and flour, mix those together, and then put them in your soup, it makes gives it a really pretty, um, makes it kind of glossy and it also thickens it. And then just like with cornstarch or any other thickener, you have to bring it back up to a simmer to, to get the full desired thickness. So that's another way to thicken it if you wanna do that. But I'm good here. So let's go ahead and plate some up. I'm gonna turn my heat off. And I tasted this, you guys, it's so divine, so good. I'm so glad I used that roasted corn stock this time. It really made a difference. And then I am going to add a little bit of cheddar cheese on top. You could also add more bacon crumbles if you want. And then some fresh chives. Look how pretty. I hope you can see it. It's kind of an awkward position, but it is beautiful and totally delicious. So I hope you'll give it a try. Like I said, you have lots of options with the type of stock you use. You have options with whatever you wanna use for creaming and for thickening. So I hope I covered all that. If you have any comments or questions about making this soup, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I appreciate you coming along with me today and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not a subscriber so you don't miss out on any of the fun. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.